Good morning and welcome to Faith University. My name is LaShawn and our lesson for the day will focus on the fall of Jericho. The text is coming from Joshua 2 and 4 and 12 through 20. The time of action was 1405 BC. The place of action was Jericho. The golden text is coming from Joshua 16. And the word of the Lord reads, And the seventh time, when the priests had blown the trumpets, Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. Let us pray, Father. We thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. And we give you honor. God, we thank you for another opportunity to say thank you. We thank you for a chance, God to give you praise, glory, and honor. Now, God, I pray, God, that this word will fall on good ground. As we study to seek your word for direction and guidance, God, I pray, oh God, that a life, someone will be encouraged on this morning as we go deeper in your word. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So here, acting on instructions from the Lord, the Israelites marched around Jericho for seven days and conquered the city. When its walls fell down, Israel destroys the city and everything in it, except for Rahab and her family. So what are the walls of Jericho? The account of the walls of Jericho is found in the book of Joshua, which is one of the historical books in the Old Testament. It is named after Joshua, the worthy successor of Moses, who led the Israelites. This book contains action for of Israelites defeating the Canaanite cities and obtaining the promised land. It also tells of the obedience and faithfulness of the Israelites and their enjoyment of the promised land. The book of Joshua ends when Joshua farewell speech as an old man nearing his death. Jericho was the gateway city to Canaanite that the Israelites came to when they entered the promised land. The city of Jericho was surrounded by walls so that no one was able to get in, and the walls served as a solid protection against attacks. The walls has been locked to keep the Israelites out. This moment is incredibly important because the Israelites had finally entered the promise, the land, the promised land that God had told them about. And they go on to successfully conquering the first city of their along their journey. The fallen walls of Jericho became a key affirmation that God was fulfilling his promise to, to them and that God would be with them as they took possession of the promised land. God had given Jericho very specific instructions on what to do to cause the walls of Jericho to collapse so that the Israelites will defeat Jericho and claim the city. And when we look at this, we face, we all face battles every day with the, with decisions that we have to make the choices that have to, to to determine and the steps that we have to take the devil does everything he can do to make sure we fail we understand according to the word that the devil comes to steal kill and destroy. So here our lesson this week shows how Joshua and his men simply follow God's instructions and were victorious. Joshua simply 
follow God's instructions and they were victorious. That's a lesson for all of us to learn that when we be obedient and do the things that God has commanded us to do, we can guarantee that we will have victory. We have to follow God, even if the journey seems impossible, impossible or unexpected. Again, we must follow God, even if our journey seems impossible or unexpected. So I'll go into the text a little bit more. And it starts out with Joshua 6 and 2. The Lord says unto Joshua, See, I have handed Jericho over to you, along with its kings and soldiers. So after Joshua received that the spy received the spy's report, he heard directly from God that indeed God would hand the city, the king, the soldiers over to Joshua and the Israelites. Just as God spoke to Moses, God spoke to Joshua. Just as God expected Moses to obey him as the true leader of the people, so God expected Joshua to obey him. And the same applies to us. As God spoke to Moses, God spoke to Joshua, and God speaks to us. And our response should be, yes, and a man. So we'll go on to Joshua 6 and 3. It says, Ye shall march around the city, and all of the warriors circling the city once. Thus you shall do for six days. So here, this battle plan may have seemed strange to Joshua and the Israelites. Just as, just as it may be, seem strange to us today. Like, just think about it. If someone told you to march around the city walls for six days and just keep going in circle. For, to some of us, that may be strange. However, it did have psychological advantages of playing on the hearts and the minds of those hearts who were already in fear of the Israelites and they God. So each day the Israelites will create more dread in the hearts of their enemies in Jericho. Each day the Israelites marched and were not attacked by their enemies. The more confidence they obtained in God and their victory. So they did as God has commanded them to do and they were not attacked by their enemies. Joshua 6 and 4 says, with seven priests bearing seven trumpets of rams, horns before the ark, on the seventh day ye shall march around the city seven times, and the priests blowing the trumpets. So in some sense, this requires this requirement was a test of obedience on the part of the of Israelites. They were told to march around the city seven times and then blow their trumpet as God's required before they attack. They passed the test by doing exactly as God commanded them through Joshua. It's important, as I said, important for us to do exactly as God has told us to do. And you will win a victorious life. So they pass the test by doing exactly as God commanded them to do. Just think about the test that we have in our life. And when we follow directions, when we do just as instructed, then we win. Goes on. I'll go on to, down to Joshua 6. Um, and 12, and it goes on to say, Then Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. So at the beginning of the day, Joshua rose early in the morning to obey God, just as the ark preceded the Israelites into the river Jordan, and the water was parted 
when the souls of the priests touched the water in obedience to God, so the Israelites could pass on dry land as they had at the Red Sea under Moses' command. So as the priests carried the ark, God will go with them and protect them and empower them to defeat their enemies in Jericho. So they continue to do as God commanded them to do. Joshua 6 and 16 reads, the seven priests carrying the seven trumpets of ram horns before the ark of the Lord passed on, blowing the trumpets continually. The armed men went before them and the rear guard came after the ark of the Lord while the trumpets blew continually. God did not need to do this to defeat Jericho, but the Israelites needed to obey God to defeat Jericho. I'm going to say this again. God did not need to do this to defeat Jericho, but the Israelites needed to obey God to defeat Jericho. So as they would learn later in other battles, and they would learn this later in other battles. So furthermore, the fighting of Israelites in their first major battle in the promised land would be easy if the soldiers in the city were so totally terrified. They could not fight and they wouldn't be able to fight effectively. They wouldn't be able to fight effectively. The display of the priests and the ark would show the Israelites and others in the promised land that the battle was the Lord's battle too. And God was fighting with and for them to conquer the land for them. So this battle that we go through, these tests, these trials that we go through, the battle is not ours, but it's the Lord. God will fight with you and for you, just as he did with Joshua and the Israelites. Joshua 6 and 14 goes on to say, on the second day, they marched around the city once, then returned to the camp. They did this for six days. So the Israelites marched around the city one time each day for six days, just as commanded by God. We are not told if the seventh day they march was Sabbath or not, but it is clear that if they march for the seventh for seven days, then they did not rest on the Sabbath. And this was obedience to God's commandment. The total destruction of the city was commanded by God. Therefore, it might have been conquered on the Sabbath, but we we don't we don't know if they marched on the Sabbath day. So let's go on to Joshua 6 and 15. So on the seventh day, they rose up early at dawn and marched around the city in the same manner seven times. It was only on that day that they marched around the city seven times. Jesus did good. He did the will and the work of his father on the Sabbath day. Jesus said that he was the Lord of the Sabbath. God told the Israelites to march seven times around the city. Let me share something with you. There are times to rest and times to fight. There are times when we are to hold our peace and allow the Lord to fight us. There are times that we are to be still and know that he is God. There's times where we just don't have to say anything, but sometimes there's times where we have to fight. We have to put on the whole armor of God and we have to fight. We have to fight for our families. We have to fight for our marriages. We have to fight for our ministries. We got to fight for, for just to, to keep our mind in peace. We have to 
fight. There are times when we have to rest, but there are simply times when we just got to go out and fight. The three importance of obeying God command must not be understated. Must not be understated. So Joshua 6 and 16, and at the seventh time when the priests had blown the trumpet, Joshua said to the people, shout, for the Lord has given you the city. What a loud and terrifying noise this must have produced. Joshua did not say shout and the walls will fall down. He obeyed God and he let the results of his obedience to God. Joshua obeyed God and he left the results of his obedience to God. So when we do things and we be obedient to what God has told us to do, we get blessed. We get blessed. He left the results of his obedience to God. The people were to shout and God would give them the victory in his way. God gave them victory by unexpectedly bringing down the walls of Jericho so that the soldiers could easily enter the city and in the chaos kill their enemies. God would give a strategy. He would give us things to do. When we operate in obedience, there's nothing that we can't do. There's nothing that we can't conquer when we do the things that God commanded us to do. So just imagine how people cope with massive earthquakes in in the city today. When we hear about earthquakes and tornadoes, and then to add to that turmoil, an invading army, they would be virtually helpless. We would be helpless if something like that happened now in these days. So I'll go on to verse 6 and 17. The city and all that is in it shall be devoted to the Lord for destruction. Only rabbi, the prostitute, and all who are with her in her house shall live because she hid the messengers we sent. So many um, may argue that the residents of the city were so diseased spiritually and physically and that for the spiritual and physical protection of the Israelites, everyone in the city had to be destroyed, except for those who had faith such as Rabbi and her family. People God could easily heal, for example, by faith, Lot and his daughters were saved by the angels when God had to destroy um, Sodom and Gomorrah. Rabbi and her family were saved by their faith when they trusted in and obeyed God by staying in her house. In this case, Jericho, God did not destroy the city by fire, but by invading um and by invading army under by but by the army in under his control. Under his control. So Jeremiah 6 and 18. As for you, keep away from the things devoted to destruction so as not to covet and take any of the devoted things and make the camp of Israel an object for destruction, bringing trouble upon it. So Jeremiah emphasizes obedience, knowing that some might be tempted to loot and steal as they destroyed the city. Joshua, I'm sorry, Joshua Warned that one person's disobedience could lead God could lead to God's punishment in the camp. One person disobedience could lead to God's punishment in the camp. It's very important to know that what we do 
when we disobey God, it not only affects us, but it affects everyone around us. So if one person would have been disobedient, it could have led to God punishment in the camp. All items of certain types were to be destroyed. And one person's disobedience by stealing might lead to destruction of others. For example, the item stolen might bring a disease into the camp or lead some to think that obeying God really is not important or led God to quit supporting the people until they repent or led Joshua to discipline and punish those who disobeyed after their disobedience hurt others. So when we do things and we step out of the will of God and we think that it's okay to do that, it also affects our family. When we're not in covenant with God, when we're not doing the things that God has told us to do, it falls down to our children's and our children's children's. That's why it behooves us to be obedient to the things that God has told us to do. So I'll move on to Joshua 6 and 19. But all silver and gold and vessels of bronze and iron are sacred to the Lord. They shall go into the treasury of the Lord. So here Joshua begins to name four of the most important and valuable metals of that time. Bronze and iron reminds us of the Bronze Age and the, and the Iron Age and how important these metals was um, in warfare, in warfare and architectural. Those metals was important important these metals could not could not become disease as leather and cloth might become disease for and spread to other items gold and silver could be beautiful and valuable and used for trade so they use the gold and silver for trade god's command will prevent soldiers from fighting among themselves for these valuable Metals. So these were valuable um, metals at that at that time. Joshua six and twelve. So the people shouted, and the trumpets was blown. As soon as the people heard the sound of the trumpet, they raised a great shout, and the wall fell down flat. So the people charged straight ahead into the city and captured it. When the people obeyed God, they experienced great success and God was honored and became more respected by the Israelites and their enemies in the promised land. They experienced success when they did exactly as God commanded and they did not take half measures. They learned the secret of success for future battles. When we do what God tells us to do, and we do it right how he has ordered us to do, we don't have step, we don't say things like, okay, if I, if God say drink one cup, we say, well, if I can drink a half a cup, I can go back and have another half a cup for later. No, when we do things that God has commanded us to do, we learn the secret to our success and battles. We learn when we be obedient, we causes God to move on our behalf. That's just like our children. When we give our children orders to do, when we tell them to clean the house, when we tell them to go to school and make good grades, when they do, when they be obedient to us, we reward them for their obedience. That's the same way God deals with us. When we be obedient and we do things that God tells us to do and we don't try to take shortcuts, we are rewarded for our faithfulness. When we're faithful and we're 
dedicated to the things of the Lord, we can expect God to bless us. We can expect God when we do things just as parents, when we make, when our children make us proud, we reward them. That's the same way God feels about us as children of God. When we do the things that God commanded us to do, he shines on us and he blesses us. Amen. So God is always good to give us directions we need when we are willing to patiently wait upon him. It may be one of the hardest things we have to do as believers, simply biding our time until he indicates clearly what steps we are to take next. But experience has taught many of us that the only thing harder than waiting on the Lord is wishing we would have waited. Isn't that what we learn from our experience? Sometimes when we do things that God has told us to wait, he's told us just to stand still. And when we do things, we learn the hard way. We learned that if we would have just waited on the Lord and did what he told us to do, we would have had better outcomes. We would have, we would have, we would have made better choices. So I just want to encourage you on today by this lesson to simply say, obey God, obey God and do as he instructed us to do. If we're going to when if we're going to live a victorious life, if we want to live a life of winning, walking in victory, walking in success, just obey God. Simply do what God tells us to do. Don't take any shortcuts. If he sometimes God had to tell us to go the long way, but if he tells us to go the long way, all things work together for our good. All things work according to his purpose. God knows our, he knows every intricate details about us from the foundation of the world. He knows he, he's ordered our steps. So we just have to simply obey and do as God instructed us to do. Pray that this lesson has blessed you guys as it has blessed me and understand that there is a blessing in our obedience. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. God, I pray that something was spoken, something was shared that will cause someone to change, that will cause someone to see themselves and examine themselves and understand that it's better to obey God. If we want to live a victorious life in Jesus, we have to be obedient. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen.